Hey everyone, Tom Gentile. Welcome to Tom's Trading Room, sponsored by Optionetics. Glad to have you sitting in with me. We're going to talk about the U.S. dollar today. Uh, sorry for the lame intro, but uh, we'll be back. You'll be seeing my uh, bright and smiling face uh, sooner than you know it. Before we get going in this video, quickly, you can pause this disclaimer to read it word for word, I'm gonna mention two quick things. Number one, stock and options trading has large potential rewards, but also large potential risk. And also number two, I'm not an investment advisor. I'm here to show you how it is that I spot opportunities and create alternative risk trades other than simply buying and going long, all right? Uh, if you find this video informative, please help us out. Hit that like button below. If you subscribe to these videos, you'll get them as soon as they are released. But you have to ding that bell. You have to ding that bell so that you can get these videos instantly. Okay, big questions, comments that we're going to talk about in this video. Is the dollar a buy now? The dollar, and I'll show you charts in a moment, has dropped considerably in the last year. Right? But there is some recent news surrounding the U.S. dollar that suggests that the bottom may be in. And if it is, I want to show you my top three dollar buy trades right now. So let's talk about the news. Um, you know, I, there's several clippings out there recently that uh, are around the U.S. dollar. I mean, if you take a look at the three I have here, two of them suggest a buy and one really can suggest perhaps where the herd may be going. So take a look, S&P Global is saying that a surge in bond yields is strengthening the U.S. dollar, but the rally may not last. Number two, Market Pulse is saying that you can buy almost everything, and buy almost everything is back. And Goldman Sachs just came out with an article not long ago, or Bloomberg came out with an article on Goldman Sachs, where they have cut their short dollar trade because they believe that the U.S. dollar has ran its route to the downside. So looking at a chart of DX, all right, that's the U.S. dollar, is the bottom in. If you take a look at last year, we were trading at 100 and coming down to below 90. That was a 10% drop in the greenback, all right? Now, the U.S. dollar is considered the world's reserve currency, one of the most stable currencies, if not the most stable currency in the world. So when you see a 10% move in the U.S. dollar, that's a, that's a big move, but more recently, since the beginning of this year, we've started to see a bounce back. Now, what could this rally spell? Well, I, you know, I mean, again, we could look at the U.S. dollar and say it could be undervalued for technical or fundamental reasons. Future inflation could prompt the Fed to increase rates thereby strengthening the U.S. dollar. Uh, also, a potential drop in equity or commodity markets could cause really the dollar to arbitrarily go up. Now, if one or more of these scenarios happen, the top three plays that I'm looking at right now uh, with the U.S. dollar are the following. All right, let's start, start with what I call the cheapest USD play, and that is in UUP. So UUP is the Power Shares Double Dollar Index. All right, so what that means is that if we're looking at uh, UUP, Whatever UUP is doing, okay, uh, the U.S. dollar is doing, but this is UUP is a double dollar. So what that means is that it moves at twice the rate of the U.S. dollar. So if the U.S. dollar dropped 10% last year, UUP drops closer to 20%. UUP was at this time last year around 29. All right, UUP came down and hit a low of 24. So seeing a five point five and a half point drop in uh, UUP uh, is about a 20% move to the downside. Notice the bottom in UUP came at the beginning of the year, just like the bottom of the US dollar. It almost double bottom, but then started rallying higher. And we've now gotten above and closed above the highs that happened at the beginning of March. So where are we likely to go from here? I think 25 is gonna be a very interesting area of resistance. If we get above the 25 level, then, you know, significant moves take it up to around 25 half, maybe even 26. Now, I'm an options guy, so I'm looking at this saying, well, how can I play this as an, as an option trader? If I'm bullish UUP, I could do what? I could buy calls. I could sell puts. There's a number of different things I could do here. But because this, these are so cheap, 
Selling premium doesn't make sense. So I'm looking at the call options, and a couple of things that, that uh, strike me are this. All right, with UUP's recent price at $24.93, the 25 calls are considered the at the money calls. This is the May 21st call options. That means they have more than 40 days to expiration, and yet they're only trading for 19 cents, right? Cheap, uh, because one contract is going to cost you $19 plus commission. The other reason they're cheap is because of this column right here. All right, this is the implied volatility. It tells us where the IV is. But, uh, and right now, the IV on the US dollar is trading below seven. Uh, in fact, the 25 calls, it's at 672. That's very, very cheap. That means these options are inexpensive, not only in price, but in volatility. And if we do get a rise in the US dollar, obviously a, the price should increase, but the IV, the angst behind it, could cause extrinsic values to go up as well. So I like this. Uh, if I do believe we're going to see uh, continued moves in the U.S. dollar to the upside and UUP. The next play I would look at if, the, if we see a rising U.S. dollar would be to look at the bonds. All right? And you don't have to look any further than TLT. TLT is the iShares Barclays 20-year Treasury ETF. And as you can see, this ETF, as it trades in an equity account, uh, earlier, well, not earlier, really late last year around Thanksgiving, was trading around 160, has fallen all the way down into the 130s before starting to get a rebound. Now, if we looked at this and said, all right, 160 to 132, uh, if we're looking at uh, the 145 area, right, 145 to 147 half, that's a 50% retracement up. <clears throat> that's about... You take a look at that, that's almost 10 points. That's 8 to 10 points higher than it is right now. So again, um, buy calls, sell puts, possibly spreads, but here's another one that actually looks really cheap. So with the asset, TLT, trading just below 137, the 137 calls are considered the at-the-money calls. And at $2.71, they may not be as cheap as UUP, but we're talking about something that, that potentially is going to move a lot more than UUP. You know, looking back at UUP, again, you could get a move in UUP where we go to 25 half. Only a 50 cent, maybe a 60 cent move in UUP would double the, the 25 calls. But with TLT, we would look, we would need to see about a five or six point move with TLT to get a double here. Now, that's entirely possible because look at the chart once again. We're talking about something that moved from 160 down to the 130s in a few months. If we got a pop up within the next 40 days that took us to say 145, for instance, we should see a double in these 137 calls. But again, we're gonna, it's, it's a US dollar play. You have to have reason to believe that the US dollar is going to strengthen. If U.S. dollar strengthens, TLT should strengthen along with it, or perhaps TLT could be the dog that wags the tail of USD. Either way, these are two great plays if you believe that USD is going to firm up. Number three, probably the most controversial of them, but I'm going to bring it up anyway, and that would be a bearish stock play on the S&P. Now, SPY has enjoyed a really great move since this time last year, but more importantly, since the election, we've gone from about 325 on SPY to now trading above 400. And so looking at pullbacks there, looking at the, the implied volatility on the SPY, notice where it was in November. It was trading quite a bit higher than it is right now. In fact, it's trading at yearly lows. And that old adage is when the S&P is high, it's time to buy. All right, buy the S&P. But when the S&P is at low, all right, when the IV is at the low, when the VIX is low, it's time to go. That means look to protect yourself in the event of a potential correction. Okay, so a quick look at the puts in the SPY if we're bearish on this. As you can tell, the implied volatility on SPY is as low as it's been in a year. The problem is, is that there's still the 406, the at-the-money puts are still expensive. They're $8. So 
Instead of perhaps buying a put, perhaps a put spread where you buy the higher strike put and you attempt to sell something that's lower strike to help take in the amount or part of the amount you paid for. So for instance, if we bought the 406 and we paid eight and then perhaps take the 403 and they're almost seven, you could literally do this three point spread for a dollar. So bringing it, so it's costing a dollar, all right? But we could potentially bring in two dollars between now and May 21st. All right, so that is a bearish play looking at SPY. All of these three plays are made so that if the dollar potentially rises, these should all benefit as suggested. Now, options on these stocks can offer lower risks, lower costs, and higher probabilities in buying the asset. And again, while there are no guarantees that this market is overbought, you know, if this is suggesting that a short-term pullback is coming, and it is. These are some great ways to hedge both a rising dollar, a potential correction in the market, and even your portfolio as well. Thanks again for joining me, folks. Again, if you like this video, it will help support our channel, and subscribing and dinging that bell will allow you to get these videos as soon as they're uploaded. Uh, have a great day. I'll see you on the next video. Bye now.